to um, you know, attend the meetup and also uh, hang out and listen to, listen to us. Uh, I am Satyan Sangani. I'm the uh, founder, or one of the founders, and the CEO of Elation. Um, we started the company about two and a half years ago, and so have been installed for the better part of that period of time. Um, earlier this last month, actually at the end of March, we just came out of stealth, and so we're going to talk about what we do today. Um, so by way of background, um, we are a company that, though we've been in stealth for a long time, actually have some amazing customers like eBay, like Stealth, like MarketShare, like iHeartMedia, who are all in production, who have used our software for multiple years. And so while we are out of Stealth, that doesn't necessarily mean that our software is correspondingly immature. Um, the team itself is actually assembled out of a group of folks who come from relatively large enterprises. So I myself came out of Oracle. I used to run a line of business at Oracle where I was responsible for data warehousing in financial services and the analytical applications over at Oracle. Um, my two co-founders who are technical were both PhDs who were most recently at Google, one of whom has a background in AI and the other of whom is a researcher with 50 patents to his name, who's our CTO. Um, and our fourth co-founder is a designer who worked for Apple um, on their Siri product. And so it's a fairly strong team, and we're funded by some fairly strong um, venture capitalists. Uh, the ones that you would know are Data Collective, Bloomberg Beta, Costa Noah, and of course, Andreessen Horowitz. And so that's a background on the company, um, and I'll just kind of forward to why we all sort of assembled and kicked off to do what we do. So broadly speaking, we are a data and analytics company. And the problem that we are sort of here to solve is that there are, of course, more and more data systems and more and more data that lives outside in the enterprise um, every single day. And so that data is stored in tools like Hadoop. That data is stored in systems like Teradata and Oracle and MySQL and MongoDB. And with all of these different databases and all of these different data sources, um, the problem is that for human beings, it's hard to know what any of this stuff is. And so our corporations are becoming more and more complicated by virtue of all of this data that we're collecting and all the applications that we're running. But our ability as people to navigate this information is limited because there's so much knowledge that you need to actually use the data systems. You have to get up to speed on so much different IT, so many different people in order to actually make use of the knowledge that exists in the enterprise. And so what we basically developed as a response to that sort of core problem statement is something relatively simple in concept. It's a data catalog. But it's a data catalog in the same way that Yelp is a catalog or a directory for local businesses relative to the yellow pages. Um, today, you might have some knowledge of all of the data that lives in your enterprise and the databases and where they live and what they do. Um, but something like Yelp comes along relative to the yellow pages and gives you information about who's been to the restaurant. Um, whether or not the restaurant's a good restaurant, what photos are like, what the menu is like, what the opening, when the, whether the restaurant is open or not, when you want to go to it. And all of that context gives you information that the yellow pages never could give you. In that exact same way, Alation is basically a software suite that gives you context. It gives you context about what database table you're using, what rapport you're using, what data people inside of the enterprise are using. And we do a lot of deep mining and machine learnings, looking at access logs, looking at query logs, looking at every report that's been defined, looking at every database table that's been defined to understand the data and information landscape inside of a company. And so by doing that, we're able to create this really, really rich graph of what's going on inside of the company in the same way that LinkedIn gives you a graph about your professional network and Yelp gives you a graph about what you're doing. And so with that, we are able to enable a few applications that we use as end user applications for what people do with their software. Um, at the very basic level, we have a data search and discovery capability, which is something that every one of our customers uses. And the basic idea here is, look, I shouldn't have to know, you know that something is called txun underscore id underscore num underscore b in order to find information about a transaction. I should be able to type the word transaction and find all the reports and all the people and all of the experts that are relevant to my particular question. And so our data search and discovery, uh, search and discovery capability essentially allows you to use English and just get answers out. Okay? Um, but on top of that core search and discovery capability, we've got three associated use cases that we sell to different audiences. And these are largely complementary use cases that are built on top of the catalog. Um, the first is in the realm of, and I'll start from the middle and kind of go in and out, because the first is really sort of all around the ethos of where we were founded as a company. It's in the world of data um, and collaborative analytics. 
basically the idea here is how do I help share knowledge about people and about systems faster? How do I share knowledge of building a query about the data sources inside of the enterprise? How do I share knowledge about how to use all of this stuff so people can analyze information and consume information faster? So that's what we do there. We also help data governance folks. I'm not going to really talk about that in the context of this demo. And we also um, world, exist in the world of, the I, in of IT to help people optimize their data. Data and storing data is really expensive. Data optimization helps people store that data and that information better. So without further ado, I'm going to get to the demo. Um, and you know, would love to take questions <coughs> sort of as we're going through that process. So what you guys would see in front of you right now is a database table. And a database table is kind of interesting. Sometimes it has English-like things in it. Sometimes it has names. Um, this is a contact list for a whole bunch of doctors that live um, in the United States. There's about 3 million doctors in the United States, and they're all listed inside of this table. Um, now, largely speaking, this stuff is inscrutable to most people, because you don't necessarily know where this stuff came from, what this stuff means, what questions this can ask of you, what any of the fields mean. And so if you're looking at a database and the average enterprise, you know, we were at a customer today that's a large bank, and this one division of this one large bank said that they had 49,000 databases. And each of these databases on average had 5,000 tables inside of it. So in the context of, you know, what is multi-millions of these, how do you know what any of this stuff is? Right? And so what we basically do is we contextualize this information. The way in which we contextualize this information is we add a whole bunch of information around it. So you'll notice that when we sort of drill in a little bit, and I'll go to the overview page, um, you can see information about this table that is automatically generated. So we can tell you things like who are the top users of this table. And we look at the database and we're able to learn that by looking at the access logs and by looking at the machine logs. We're able to understand who are the stewards of the table to the extent that that's declared. We can automatically ingest from surrounding text what exactly are the descriptors of the table so you can know how this information is produced and what it's for and why it exists. We give you a logical description that makes it searchable. We can tell you in the breadcrumbs at the very top all the way up here uh, where the, inform where the ex information exists and what side of what database and how you could access it. And the basic notion is that what we're trying to do is not necessarily discover all of this information and bring out all these massively new insights. What we're really trying to say is, look, this is all information that people have as tribal knowledge inside of your enterprise, that there's all this stuff that people need to know in order to be able to use that initial table. And what Alation does is it will automatically bring all of this tribal knowledge together inside of an interface, inside of a system that's constantly keeping up to date around the data. So the basic idea is now I don't have to go learn about the data anymore. I don't have to go learn about how a table was produced, where the table came from, who knows something about this particular table, when I use this table versus these 15 other tables that look exactly like the exact same thing that I'm looking at. I can now get that information completely contextually and discover it directly inside of the interface. And so beyond sort of, if you will, this, we give you a whole bunch of other interesting capabilities, and I can't possibly go through every single one of them. We've been developing this for some time. But we also give you information like lineage, where you can gra graphically browse some of the various tables inside of the database. And one of the really other fun things that we can do, and I'll show you that in just a second, is that we can allow you to query the data pretty easily. And so we actually have built alongside this a query tool that enables people to easily run SQL queries. And so let me show you exactly what that would look like. So in this particular case, um, I might, as an analyst, want to write a query in order to be able to find out how many doctors are in the United States. Well, if I mouse over this particular table, I can sort of see that same profile of the data that I saw earlier. But if I want to write a SQL query, and I realize that not everybody in this audience would have done so, but if you've done so before, then we'll automatically start suggesting to you things about that you can get from that table. So I might want the last name of that doctor. And I might want to assemble the first name of that doctor as well. And I might want to know the gender of that individual. So I type G, and I get a profile automatically. And so what we're doing is we're saying, look, by creating all of this context, you can do anything as simple as finding a table or finding a report or even authoring a query, and you can do that because all of the knowledge, all of the context in order to access and understand the data is directly and immediately at your fingertips. You don't have to learn about all those business process. It's literally right inside of the interface day one. 
And so we're being used at scale with you know, large Fortune 500 customers. We also have customers that are you know, um, 100 person companies with 10 people data analytic teams. But the basic essence behind all of them is that they're data driven in institutions and all of the people want their individuals and their employees to learn faster because data is the means through which they learn. So that's elation. I, I hope I haven't bombarded you with too much information, but happy to take questions uh, as they come up and uh, we'll look forward to answering them. Uh, go ahead. What's the normal process for <clears throat> aggregating information that might not be easily derived from the table? So for example, you have all this contextual information, like the table titles or the, the column titles, like gender code. Like, is there an automated process for onboarding and integrating all those databases? Yeah, there is. So a lot of it's done. So, so what we do today is we essentially attach using normal database uh, adapters or drivers. And so we use JDBC or ODBC to connect to these databases, or we use APIs where those exist. Um, and once we connect to that, we onboard all of that information on an effectively an automatic basis. And so we've built adapters for you know 30 some odd different platforms. Um, on top of that, if you have data stored in text formats like data dictionaries or metadata repositories, we hook up those via our APIs as well. Um, generally speaking, that can take anywhere from a couple of days to a couple of weeks. Um, and from that process, people start querying almost immediately thereafter. So it tends to be that people, our, our POCs generally last um, you know, five uh, days to get set up and then another 25 days to test. How do you handle in an organization the complexity of permissioning? either database table level or even field level permissioning when somebody's kind of sitting looking at this master structure. Yeah, I know it's super important. So we inherit permissioning by default from the underlying database systems that we crawl. And so to the extent that you've established permissions in those database systems, we actually understand and search respects and regards that. So you can only see in elation what you happen to have access to in the underlying system. Um, you can make that more or less secure inside of elation. And so if, for example, people have access to things that they shouldn't have access to, you can control that and you know, give people less rights than they otherwise would have. And vice versa, you can give people more access inside of elation as well. And so we allow you to soften or um, harden that default assumption. Including even hiding tables or databases that you can't, you're not supposed to see? That's correct. And so in the profiling, you can even make data tagged as sensitive. You cannot profile it at all. You can choose to only reveal it to a certain set of people. And so all of that is available. Okay. Yep. Please. Uh, can you give a, <clears throat> a couple of examples of, of, of a couple of clients that have used uh, your system and you know, a couple of examples of the tangible results that were derived? Yeah, so I think, I think the basic, so, so the basic <coughs> premise is that um, in order to be able to use the data, there's a lot of knowledge that's required, right? And so who are the people that are trying to benefit from this system? Generally speaking, it's analytic users and business users who are trying to use the data to some business purpose. And these are generally highly paid individuals, either titled as data scientist or data analyst. Um, sometimes they're product managers, sometimes they're business executives. And getting the right answer or getting the wrong answer has a high degree of um, effect on the end business outcome. And so what are the kinds of business measures and outcomes that we're essentially helping them achieve? Generally speaking, faster time to insight. So at eBay, for example, they have upwards of a thousand analysts and these analysts are dearly paid individuals and what we're doing with them is we're able to on in some cases raise productivity by 50 to 20 percent um, you know which obviously the math is pretty clear there um, we also accelerate the productivity of the individual analyst and so we're able to get people to do the same amount of work um, so the same query that somebody would write we're able to get them to write in 50 to 70 percent of the time 50 to 70 percent less time than they otherwise would have done um, and we're also reducing error rates and so if you think about the amount of reconciliation that's done in particular inside of financial institutions and the amount of time you spend saying how did what were the assumptions that I used to produce their support and how did I get to that elation helps with understanding how all of that knowledge was recreated and so th those tend to be the sorts of metrics that people look for when they're when they're looking at our stuff for this particular use case for the other use cases there's other metrics any other questions but if you want to do that, you need to understand the context in which it was developed. How do you really find that thing out? Because I'm still having tough time to appreciate whatever you said, it's good to think, but how you reach that stage, that's something that 
yeah, so the technology, it's funny, I was with a customer today who was a large bank and they're like, this feels like magic. Um, and and that's, that's great. I mean, that's obviously a wonderful thing. And I think, obviously, there's not magic. There's technology behind it. And we can go through, probably not in this session, the details of that technology. Um, but, but there's a variety of things that we do to gather that context that lives in a variety of different places. Some of that is based upon machine learning. Some of that is based upon classic search and crawling. Some of that is based upon great design where we effectively have built interfaces to get humans to volunteer information that they otherwise would not have volunteered. And so there, that, that context lives in a lot of different places. And what we've done is taken upon ourselves the job of essentially gathering and obtaining that context either via technology or via great design. But what I want to say is that it's based on prior knowledge. Based on what we gather, things are going to change. Now, is it like art, if it's like artificially intelligent and it can adapt to things as things start to change? It's like a chess game that you do something. Based on that, the other guy would make a move. It's not that I make a move and you make a yeah. guy can follow the same thing. Yeah. So, how does that adaptation? Happen? Because we're constantly, all of the things that I described in terms of gathering the context are constantly happening. So it's not like we all of a sudden crawl an environment and then stop crawling. To the extent that the databases are changing, we recrawl it and understand those changes and repopulate that information. To the extent that a new person writes a query, we understand that, we populate that information back into the interface. And so we're constantly learning from everything that's going on inside of those environments that we're attached to and crawling in order to be able to back populate into our uh, model what exactly we've learned. And so your assumption is right. I mean, and then that's probably the reason for our existence, that things are constantly changing. And, and because things are constantly changing, you need something like this, where the prior approach was, let me go hire an army of consultants, document a whole bunch of stuff, all of that information has a half-life of 18 months in the best case. And I know Venkat's smiling because he's actually been through this as a, you know, personally as a, as a guy doing this work. And, and then you, know, you, you essentially have to reinvent the wheel 18 months hither. And, and so that's exactly what we're here to try to address and solve. Mostly about uh, structured data, like databases and stuff, or it's also about unstructured data? Mostly structured and semi-structured data. So that table is a good example of the sorts of information that we crawl. Stuff in text, things like Google does do, do pretty well. Um, and so we're not necessarily trying to do sort of enterprise search on text, but we are doing work on mostly structured and semi-structured data, which people don't easily readily understand. Yeah. Cool. It sounds like my time's up. Thank you.